What's <coughs> excuse me? What's the deal, my people? You know what it is, Don Tony Teflon, and I'm back at you another one. And this one is Happy Valentine's Day to everybody. House of the Dragon has casted their costume director, and you know, last time I came on here, obviously I'm not an expert in this, but I have a friend who is. So I'm bringing. We are back again to talk about these costumes. Now that we have some, we know who's doing the costumes. Let's bring them in right after this. As always, I am joined by my beautiful co-host. She goes by the one, the name "Living My Rhapsody," but y'all may know it as Liv <laughs> or Mar. How are you? I'm all right. I'm perfect. This is actually Valentine's Day stream. So Heidi made that known to us. I mean, I knew that, but she made it extra special when she said that. Yeah, I'm, I'm great. How are you? I am great. And we have a fantastic guest rocking with us. The one, the only Heidi from Costume Co. We have a link will be in the description so you can go out there and subscribe. Anyone who's a mod who's here, please put her channel in the description so people can subscribe to her. Hello, Heidi. Thank you for doing Hi, this again. Hi. Lamar, thank, I was just saying before we went live that I'm so happy to spend Valentine's Day with the two of you. This is really awesome. It's and a happy lot of fun. Valentine's Day to everybody out there in the chat, especially all the beautiful ladies out there. Hopefully you get everything that you want and your man is not cheap. All right, don't tell them cheap. Don't don't get let them get over with that cheap stuff. I'll let them bring home some chocolates and call it a day. Take some more than chocolate, all right? More than just not enough. He's got to do better than that. All right. So last time, last time we got on here, we talked. We had some costume news, and it was wasn't the costume designer we talked about, but we talked about the person who was uh, the 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 concept artist, right? That's that, right. Yes, uh, concept illustrator. Uh, illustrator. Actually, he's called the costume concept artist. You're correct. Sorry, Tony. All right, Benjamin so. Ip. So we had we talked about him, and we got and we, and now we're going to the actual person. Who is the costume designer? So that, that being said, so this woman is responsible for all of the costumes, correct? Like season That's one. That's correct, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so this person will probably work directly, let's say with the production designer and oversee all aspects of costumes. Um, and sometimes they will also oversee hair and makeup as well as the head of department, but oftentimes that is given to a different person. And they will look after armor, footwear, clothing, uh, uh, any type of item that they would wear, even uh, to the extent sometimes even including weapons. All right. So that, that's not considered a prop then. Like, gee, I would think that maybe weapons would be more props. So the, the costume director is in control of the props or is that two different things? Well, I, this is how I look at it. If they're wearing it, it's part of their outfit. It's oftentimes con considered a crossover. So it would be a prop that they wear. And so like, for instance, if you're wearing, um, you know, the, the holster, uh, that would be the costume part. And then the gun that would go in there would be technically the prop, but it oftentimes it crosses over. So both departments would sort of have a say in it. All right, all right. That, do you that, know, do we know if she actually worked with anybody um, that, Sorry, I'm hearing an echo, a little bit of an, of an echo. Um, do you know if she actually worked with anybody um, before there, like anybody that she worked with? Do we know of anybody else that she may bring on board, like for fact checking and things? Well, fact, <laughs> you well, know, per book and all that. Well, from what I understand, actually, the Dragon Demands did a really great video, and I was just mentioning this to Tony. He gave us a really nice shout out, actually, after we did, um, you know, talked about Benjamin Ip. Uh, who is actually on Instagram and I follow him on Instagram and he worked on the alienist and he also worked on, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, you guys have to remind me what the name is. Melissa Vint. Melissa no, and, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, but anyway, uh, so apparently the connection that she has is with the production designer on children of men, which is, was directed by, um, Alfonso Cuaron. I think is how you say it, Quaron. So that's, I think, the connection. So there's there's some type of history there. But she's got, you know, a huge body of work. So mm -hmm. I think they were probably looking for someone who's really experienced, and this is why they've got turned to her. But also, she has wonderful experience. She has every. She's. Uh, uh, we'll go through our uh, stats. Uh, she yeah. won awards and everything else. Shout out to the Dragon Demand for giving that shout out for us. Give a shout out to him. Please put his link in the description. Check that man out. Fellow New Yorker, 
You know, or yes. that love for all my people from New York. You know what I mean? We, we got, New York, we got to rep and stuff without a shot of a doubt. So, yeah, I, I, I mean, let me pull up some of this woman's resume real quick uh, sure. so that we can actually uh, discuss. So, but she's very accomplished, very beautiful woman, too. Yeah, one of the things I was going to say, and I don't want anyone giving me a hard time about being ageist here because I, I actually just want to acknowledge this. She's 72 which I think is super cool. I actually, the last two videos I did, the costume designers were in their seventies. And I think that's yeah. awesome that, you know, you can continue to work and do something that you love long into, you know, your later years. Yeah. And also, uh, but what I thought is, is that she's done a lot of films. So maybe she's decided to do a TV show because it tends to have a little bit of a better uh, uh, timeline, like in terms of you're able to sort of have your daily life a little bit better when you're doing TV versus a film, which can be super intense. So maybe she's decided to take on a TV show, although maybe she doesn't know what she's getting herself into with this. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. Yeah, I, I think if it's, if it's well, we, first, it's got to be, we got to see how successful it is, right? We hope, hope that it will be as successful as we want it to be, you know what I mean? So uh, let, let, let's, let's let's see. It can get crazy if it's successful. So I hope they can. Let's pull up, let me pull up uh, a bio real quick. I'll do a, a quick one to, uh, so we can get some, some rundown on this woman. French woman. Um, yes. Right. Yeah. French woman. And uh, it's pronounced Jamie? Uh, Jenny is how Jenny? I've seen it. So Jenny Tamim. Jenny Tamim. So Jenny, Jenny Tamim. is Jenny. Yeah. She's born in France. She is known for her work on Skyfall 2012, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, Part 2, 2011, and Judy. 2019. Yeah, which was a biopic about Judy Garland and won, you know, quite a few awards. Yeah, that, so, that was that was a Renee Zellweger, right? Who, who yes. That. Yeah. So, um, and and the thing, uh, the other thing I was going to mention, she just didn't do that one Harry Potter. She's done six Harry Potters. Oh, all right, Jesus! So a huge, it's, a huge body right. of work. She's been nominated for one BAFTA Film Award, another yeah. five wins, and twelve nominated nominations. Let's see if we can pull up more for. Her. She's done. Yeah, all right. I've all right, got so we, here. We got, we got the whole thing here. So, two thousand twenty. Yeah. Uh, BAFTA, Best Costume Design for nominee for Judy. Uh, yeah. So she has Best Costume 2012 nominee for Harry Potter, Deathly Hollows Part 1, uh, the year before that, Part 2. Uh, best Costume, Harry Potter's Half-Blood Prince. Mm -hmm. uh, best uh, Sabin Award, Best Costume, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Saturn Award, Best Costume, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Best costume, uh, Harry Potter and the Prison of Acuba. She's done all these Harry Potter yeah. things. And she won the BAFTA Award for House of America. Uh, she, wow, Judy. She, she's, she won for uh, Skyfall, Excellent in Contemporary Film Costume Design Guild Award. What is the, the number one award for these costume designs? Like, like, uh, it's the Oscar. Uh, like, yeah, oh, now the, the BAFTA is the British, uh, it's the British equivalent to the Oscars, okay. but she's won two, um, uh, uh, was it? She's won two Costume Designer Guild Awards. So the Costume Designer Guild Awards are actually pretty prestigious because those are awarded by pe your peers. So okay. all of the fellow costume designers would have nominated and voted for her. So she won two of those. That's a pretty big deal to win that. And oftentimes, if you win a Costume de Designer Guild Award, you often sometimes will go on to win a BAFTA or win an Oscar. So she's never won an Oscar, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, she still has some time. Do we know if um, for when she was winning it, was it just based on how people perceived it um, per what they saw? Or is it anything like um, accu how accurate she was to the books? And was that ever component no. of her winning? No. So when you win a, a costume designer award, it has nothing to do with the, the source material. It's not the interpretation. It's basically how how well you did as uh, you know displaying the character and the timeline and and the story and and also you know techniques and maybe some artist artistry. Mm -hmm. uh, so for the costume designer guild awards, because it's it's being voted by other costume designers, they're going to be looking at things like technique and okay. just design overall design. Uh, whereas. I don't know, the Oscars is sort of a weird one because that's done by people in the Academy, which are fellow actors and directors and so on. Mm -hmm. So 
we I make we make a joke about that because oftentimes that goes to people who have done a historical uh, costume design as opposed to like uh, okay. urban fantasy like Harry Potter, which is why she's probably never won one because urban fantasy uh, horror those types of movies rarely ever get acknowledged uh, by the Academy. Mm. Yeah, they get they get shunned. But you know, you know, she did win for Skyfall for excellent uh, in contemporary film. She did get that yeah. one. A CDG award for Skyfall. So, yes. so she's. It, it, we see that she can do different types of films. I mean, the Harry Potter stuff would probably be the stuff that we're looking at for her. Like we think that that probably is uh, what what her style is gonna. Not it's gonna look like Harry Potter, of course not. But you know, I think that would be the closest thing that we could look at to see exactly mm -hmm. of some things that maybe uh, what we can uh, expect to see from her. In this, but she definitely, you know, has the, the has the knowledge to, to pull this off. I, I do. Does now, if you worked on films as a costume designer, and it seems like that's what she's done mostly. Do you, when you move to a, a TV show, is that like considered like? As you know, in Hollywood, sometimes if you're a Hollywood actor, you don't do TV shows. It's considered like a step down. Is that the way it's filmed? Uh, do they have the same feeling? When it comes to when you do movies, there's a step down to go to TV shows. Well, I have to say that I think it used to be, but I think Game of Thrones actually changed that because the budgets are, were huge. They were on par, like one episode was on par with a feature film. And uh, the quality was on par with anything you would see on a Paris runway, you know. So I think that that has completely changed. And we are starting to see a lot of really amazing actors and directors moving into television. So I think it's changed. HBO, I think, has changed that. Uh, Netflix, I think, has changed that. And there's a bit of a, a backlash in Hollywood about, like, see a show on Netflix, a movie, an original movie on Netflix being uh, nominated for an Oscar. So there's I, there is some definite... Uh, a shift going on there, especially with uh, COVID, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. yeah. We're all at home. Yeah. Well, that, all right, I guess we're going to get to a couple of pictures here. Yes. And, and I think I have it here. Let's see. Let me see if I could share this real quick. Booyaka. Yeah. So that's Jenny there. And this is her. Um, it seems like there was a couple of wardrobes. This is her in the, uh, I believe it. Well, it's one of the James Bond, uh, the uh, Skyfall, or uh, what's the other one? It was one of the wardrobes of uh, mm -hmm. James Bond. And then, yeah, so this, these are all the Harry Potter movies that she's done. She did the six of them. And then she said she decided not to do uh, Fantastic Beasts because she sort of felt like she'd sort of, you know, done everything. She, she you know, st started it. Like the first two weren't done by her, but then she mm -hmm. basically, you know, finished the story off of the kids and she felt like her job was done. Yeah. Uh, now, real, thing quick, I, real quick before you, sure. so uh, the, this is an illustration. Now, is, does she draw her own illustrations or does she get that guy who we talked about last time? Is he going to draw the stuff and she's going to tell him he's going to draw it and then she's going to say, fix this, fix this. And then she likes that she actually creates it. Is that how they work together or no? Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Here, so here's an example. I just wanted to show you guys. It's funny that you're asking me, Tony, as I have this picture, this is, a, this is one of her drawings. Like this is, this is how she draws. So, one of the things I've mentioned before, I've told this to my viewers, you don't have to be an artist to be a costume designer. In fact, a lot of costume designers will do what are called mood boards or storyboards, which is they'll go, and this is what I think she does. So she'll go around, she'll uh, either do an album or she'll put pictures up on the wall. Like for instance, when I did my interview with the costume designer of The Expanse, that's what she did. She did storyboards, uh, mood boards, and had them up all over the wall in the wardrobe. And then they had an artist, concept artist, do all of the uh, the actual design. So it's her idea, but yeah, you have someone who does it. So Benjamin Ip, for instance, is an amazing illustrator. So uh, he would be the person who would do that. And I did mention the to the Dragon Demands, there likely will be other concept uh, illustrators as well, I'm sure, because everyone has their own strength or whatever. So I have a feeling there'll be more than one. So, but what I read in an interview, she said is she does like to draw out the fabrics and everything. And that way she can send the fabric shoppers, the buyers out to fight by the fabric. So this is an illustration where she has done something. She says she likes using Prismacolor. I think she partnered with them. And then the the little bits here that are fabric swatches that they've put on the pictures is what oftentimes costume designers will, they'll, it's called swatching. They'll take samples of the fabrics. And then that way the cutter, who is the person who actually makes the costume will know, oh, this is the fabric that it's supposed to be made of. And it prevents uh, any mistakes from happening there. Is there any um, 
a idea, for example, like we said, they look for fabrics. Are these fabrics? There are people who actually go out there and look for fabrics. They're, they know where right. to. So the yeah. fabrics are never made. Let's say she makes a design. Like um, you were posting for the, I think you posted some stuff on uh, Instagram, like different fabrics for different shows. Um, I thought that these are kind of like created for the show or is it just kind of um, from yeah, like Yeah, so for instance, with Bridgerton, when I posted mm -hmm. some of those fabrics, those fabrics were actually from a place in England. And a lot of Michelle, actually Michelle Clapton got a lot of those fabrics. It's funny because sometimes I'll notice they'll have like, they'll do a posting on Instagram of a fabric. I'm like, oh, that's from Game of Thrones. I'll be like, that's Game of Thrones. And they'll, look, <laughs> they'll be like, you're right. Good eye kind of thing, right? So because I've studied, you know, Game mm -hmm. of Thrones, like to, you know, the end of the earth kind of thing the costumes. So, but no, that's a great, great question, actually. Um, so a lot of the times they sometimes will get fabrics printed. Like, so for instance, in Game of Thrones, when Joffrey had the burgundy velvet uh, fabric with the swords on it, the, the gold swords, and then actually C um, Cersei had a matching version of it, but with black with gold swords, she had that printed. So they mm -hmm. will sometimes do that or they'll do 3D printing like they did in Westworld. So they only had a certain amount of fabric for Dolores. So, you know, it was vintage fabric. They're like, well, what are we gonna do? We need to make multiple dresses for the stunt people and so on. So they had a bunch of it 3D printed. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is you can go to a mill sometimes. So for instance, if anybody watched my uh, uh, Gentleman Jack video, the uh, costume designer for that, he went to these mills in England and was looking for period specific type fabrics. So what he did was they have all of these catalogs and you can go through all the fabric swatches and select the fabric you like, and then you can have those printed. So oh, wow. there is definitely those options, but, uh, but you know, some of Cersei's fabrics were bought from um, uh, fabric, mm -hmm. uh, Soho fabric in London, right in London. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right. Is that now Soho fabric? Is that like Joanne fabric? Mm. <laughs> it is. It's just a bit higher end. Right. It, yeah. Uh, it's it's just like a I'm familiar with. Not that it's I, just a little bit higher end. I was going to ask that uh, similar question, Tony. <laughs> but like, for instance, like Cersei's, uh, I think her male, like chain mail fabric was, I don't know, it was like 50 pounds a yard or something. So you, the average person would be able to buy it if they wanted to and make it. And they have. All right. Yeah. So now we know. So she's going to make her pictures like this, give it to that guy or, 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 or got people like him and then yes. he'll make it and he'll do a better version of it. And then she approves that. And then that, now does she, I don't know. Do you know, does she actually cut stuff herself or she, does she, I mean, I'm sure she has seam trusses and everything, but does she actually design, like do the fabric or she just gets the concept together and lets everyone else work? Okay, so if you're working on a small show, like a really small show, the costume designer, this is what I've done, will oftentimes cut the outfits themselves. But when you're working on a big show, uh, in fact, Terry Dresbeck, someone mentioned her in the chat, does not know how to sew at all. Mm -hmm. So no, they oftentimes won't do any of that. What it So the cutter, like it's called the cutter, is the person who cut, makes the patterns and cuts out the patterns. And you will often have even more than one cutter on a show, mm -hmm. especially a, a large production. Then you will also have uh, seamstresses or stitchers, which is the more politically correct term for them, stitcher, because mm. it can be a man as well. You will have tailors, which will do the menswear. That's tailoring is different than dressmaking. And then you'll have armor makers who will do the armor. Um, uh, you'll have milliners do the hats, uh, cobblers do the footwear and then you'll have dyers break down so there's a, it's a huge department and actually while we were talking about this tony i just thought i mentioned uh one of the things and why they probably also would have hired someone with this type of experience is that when a costume designer of her uh clout comes to a production she also brings with her often her own team she'll have her team and she'll have her suppliers all kind of set up. It's like a supply chain for food. So it's all sort of set up. She doesn't need to go out and find a team of people like Michelle mm -hmm. Clapton would have had to because Michelle Clapton was really starting from scratch. She'd only really worked in, uh, I believe, advertising, like commercials, music videos, that type of thing. For the most part, she had done a little bit of film, I think, and TV. But whereas Jenny would have this entire body of staff available at her you know um available for her and then she'd be able to build a wardrobe and everything from that 
I wonder how they do it with um like when we know of casting, right? They know uh, where um or who will be there. Usually, I'm assuming they kind of pick people with a certain body type. So maybe just the you know actors and actresses or actors, actually, I guess they're either similar if for that character. But do you know if they start work on it kind of ahead of time with a general kind of idea of what? theme they're going for and then actual um cutting will start um when they have yes. actors yes great question um okay so uh the dragon demands again mentioned that jenny on her instagram page has she, she took a picture of the studio so she's already doing setup so that's called prep so they're doing what's called prep um so all you know, a couple of things can happen either the actor themselves will come in and get measured or their agent will send in their measurements and hopefully they'll mm -hmm. be accurate. In fact, when I spoke to Chris Cargadon with the, um, um, the Umbrella Academy, he told me that he did a lot of stuff remotely. It wasn't even done in person. Um, so they would actually send their measurements. They would build stuff. They would then show the actor, this is what you're going to be wearing. And it wasn't until they came in and flew in that they did all these massive fittings all at once kind of thing. So yeah. that could be a bit stressful. But hopefully if the cast are near about, then they would be available for fittings. And that would all take place before they go to camera. Um, but... Um, in terms of the look of the actors, so this is where, say, someone like Benjamin would be involved. They would actually take the picture of the actor and then build the costume around it in the design. Mm -hmm. So if you go to his web page or his Instagram page, for instance, you'll see, for instance, he's got Dakota Fanning, I think, in, uh, in some of the illustrations from The Alienist. They'll use the actual actors or take their headshots and might go online and find a bunch of different pictures and incorporate that. And what's great about that is then when they show it to the production design or sorry, the designer, sorry, sorry, uh, the director or the uh, showrunner, they can then have a better idea of how that's going to look when they finally come to set. Um, but one thing I want to point out to everybody is that the costume designer can't completely decide what they want the actor to wear. Really, it comes from the script and then it comes from the showrunners. So they're taking direction from that uh, as opposed to say, hey, I think I'm going to put this character in that. It's going to be really she's taking mm -hmm. direction from the showrunners and the director. And if it's like Game of Thrones, it won't be each episode director. It'll be probably, uh, I think it's Ryan Condal. That you guys yeah, can correct you me. You would think that's someone with her experience, with her experience, that the, that the people Ryan Condo know, they're going to say, listen, this is what Game of Thrones did before. We, we want you to do your thing. You hire someone like her, you think you let her do her work, right? You don't just try to handcuff her and say, I want this done this way. You let her do her thing, and then you look at it and say, okay, I, I like where you're going with it. Yeah. So, okay. That's a great point, Tony. So what happens is some directors who have worked with the same con a costume designer over and over again, they will do that. They'll completely trust their designer to come up with what they want. But I think there will be a little bit of overseeing of her process because they don't want to go with a completely new world. They want to tie in the original world. And it is, Tony, you'll have to tell me how much earlier this is. I think it's a couple of hundred years earlier. It's like uh, th this th this episode is 200 years or not 200, 90 years, 90 years. I 90 think. years. So it's not that much earlier, right? So we're le less than a century. And so if you think of something like now, for instance, we're, it, we're in 1920. Yeah, okay. Now, you know, 18, or sorry, we're in 2020. <laughs> Uh, so if you look back to 1920, okay, sure. The silhouettes were slightly different, but I mean, men still wore pants and shirts and shoes and women, you know, okay, mostly wore dresses, but you know, for the most part, we wore hats and carried handbags and mm -hmm. wore overcoats and things. So things aren't that much crazier, uh, like, you know, much different. So I think that's what's going to happen. They'll probably keep somewhat of the silhouette, maybe that uh, Japanese influence that we saw with the armor, um, with the Targaryen, or actually the Targaryens were more, um, I think more Mongol, but I'll have to double check my notes on that. But I have a feeling that she will slightly reference what Michelle Clapton has done. And I was actually thinking about this this morning. I wouldn't be surprised if Michelle got brought in as a consultant. I, um, mm -hmm. the dragon maybe can keep an eye on that, but I have a feeling that she will be brought in if she wants to as a consultant, because it might be helpful for the team. 
Yeah, that would only yeah, we're, we're about, it would be like mm -hmm. the 30s, like right, comparing the 30s, yeah. the 1930s to us, Not, right? Sorry, now. 1930s, exactly. Yeah, 90 with years before. Yeah, with, with um, Game of Thrones, there was always I remember um, question of why they haven't moved on. Like we can kind of see the castles that not a lot has changed over there. So I'm assuming they're going to kind of maybe stick with that, not to make uh, huge dramatic changes, especially since it's not been like more than what 100 plus some years. So. Yeah, they're not going to have toilets, you know. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're, yeah. Know, they're not going to have toilet paper. Well, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> toilet paper. The funny thing is, though, is that the Egyptians did have viaducts, which is so funny. Right. And then we kind yeah. of collapsed a, yeah. a bit uh, in technology. But, yeah. I, it, you know, it's a medieval world. It's a Middle Ages yeah. world. So it, we're sort of dealing with that type of thing with, you know, a bit of a fantasy element to mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I don't want to. Dragon's here, that. by the way. Oh, he is. What's up to the Dragon Demands? Yeah. Repping with us right now. I said, a fellow New Yorker. Oh, we got love for all my New Yorkers. So what are yeah. we looking at in this picture right here? Oh, okay. Sorry. So these are some of her Harry Potter, uh, uh, you know, uh, work that she's done. And just to show you guys, I've got some of her Harry Potter. Uh, oftentimes after the show is wrapped, they'll, you know, they do these exhibits. And so fans mm -hmm. can go and look at them. And then they did that with Game of Thrones, obviously. So these are some of her... Um, I just found some of these I grabbed actually from her Instagram. So if anybody's interested, you can go to her Instagram, but just, you can see she's done that. Uh, you can see the level of, uh, experience in the way that they, they've managed the textures and the layers and the breakdown and the dying and the over dying of her costumes. Like this is Malfoy. This is pretty amazing. You can see this even being like a Targaryen, right? Like mm -hmm. I could sort of see this being a Targaryen. Yeah, I could definitely see mm -hmm. doing something like that. Yeah. You know, it seems like she's she like, you know, I, I, I'm thinking something like broad shoulders for Targaryens, like, like, yeah, of course, type, type things, like, like, kind of like the Michael Jackson thriller jacket. That, that's. <laughs> 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 oh, Tony, it's really funny because I just watched The Stand and there's this one character in that who's wearing like a full on uh, Eddie Murphy slash thriller. Oh my <laughs> in there. You know, like it was so funny. Um, but OK, so here's an example I want to show you. So this is Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure which episode it is. This is the this is the costume, which is right. fantastic. Oh, that it's, uh, the, the, all right. That that is a big difference. I mean, I, that, that's <laughs> amazing. Like I would not think that that came from that picture, but now that you show it, I could see it. Yeah. So, uh, uh, what is that thing on the top? The, the the top on the left hand side. What is that called? Uh, it's a capelet. Oh, like is a that little capelet? Yeah. yeah a little cape. Little cape. Uh, yeah, I call it a capelet. It's or a short cape. Okay. Uh, but what I was going to say, so here's an example. I don't think these are her drawings. So this is an example of where a costume illustrator would have done the drawings. And But Benjamin, he's doing everything in uh, some type of design program. So at one time, obviously, costume designers used to hand render all their designs. And this is how, this is sort of old school. Some designers still do this. They put pen to paper or marker or what have you. But the, the new thing now is to do it digitally. And they, a lot of the designers are doing it that way instead. And that's why I'm saying, so for instance, this face is sort of a generic face. Uh, whereas with the newer, here, I'll show you actually an example of it, what I mean. I like that hat too. I think that the hat is brilliant. I, I do like that love hat. the hat. So for instance, with Judy Garland, here's an example where they put, you know, this, I mean, I, I, mean, I could be wrong. No, I think this is a combination of digital and hand illustrated but mm -hmm. they've tried to incorporate the costume with the uh, with renee zellweger uh her face so that's an example i think this is I, it could be hand illustrated but i was thinking because the fabrics were so close that it might actually be digital it um i like how it shows movement too it's not just a, yes yeah just like you know mannequin it's kind of in yeah mid movement but when you look at these photos compared to what the actual costumes look like, this is from Judy, which is a biopic. And obviously this is important because Judy Garland was a real life person and she would have worn these clothes. So when you look at this, like this really looks like Judy Garland, like th that's pretty amazing. And so the dress here, the one in the center mm -hmm. looks exactly like that. So they did a really good job of interpreting the original design and into the final costume now, and again the same with this one. is that harder to do is it harder to 
when you have an actual design, like you know this person has to wear this, is is it harder to do that than it is just to make some fantasy fantasy stuff? Because I would I would think it would be very hard. Like so the the crown, which by the way, I haven't watched, and I know people have been asking me to watch it. I'm kind of like, I don't know. I tried watching it to be honest with you, Tony, and I was like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Um but that's an example like Princess Diana. They recreated all of Princess Diana's outfits. And I think many of Elizabeth's outfits and Margaret's outfits for that. And so, but I did notice they did take a few liberties. Like it's not exactly. So I think this is the thing. You want to be able to recreate the essence of it without necessarily copying it exactly. If that makes sense. And by the way, that's a beautiful dress too. I like the flowers on that. I <laughs> love that. I love this the dress. off the shoulder thing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This looks mm -hmm. like a dress probably we were talking about earlier, LMR, where they probably did make this fabric. It looks wow. to me like they made it because yeah, I, I can't good. imagine I them coming about this. If she had an idea like this, I mean, the, for the red flowing one, uh, flowy one, I guess, I mean, I'm sure there are fabrics like that for somebody to hunt for them, to look for them. But that one with those flowers, if she had that as a concept, good luck finding it. Yeah, exactly. Now this one here, uh, this has what, and actually it's funny because Michelle Clapton did a lot of this. This is called fan pleating. So you can take a regular fabric and get it pleated like this. Mm -hmm. And I talk about that a lot in my Game of Thrones videos because Michelle Clapton, I think, uh, you know, uh, what's her name? Uh, Danny wore, <laughs> Danny, poor Danny. She wore a lot of this type of pleated underskirt. So um, mm -hmm. there are companies that do that type of thing. So I'm sure we have a question on I want to get this, I want to get it off of LMR's face. So if you could please answer this, Heidi, <laughs> what is the career path for for working in costuming for a young woman, for a young person? Well, I think it's really good. Um uh now one of the things I was gonna say is Jenny, which I thought was interesting. She, like, you know, I said she's not an artist, right? She, but she went to school and and has two master's degrees in French and literature. So she didn't actually go down the career path of designing, but both her parents were actually uh, had a uh, were were fashion designers, mm -hmm. and they owned their own ready to wear company in Paris. So she was already sort of on that path. But the costume designers I have worked with mostly have gone to school for design of some aspect. In fact, one of the designers I've worked with, she has a, a master's in architecture. She worked as an architect, and a lot of costume designers have gone to, to art school. Um, but they might have also gone to fashion school and studied fashion. So like, for instance, the costume designer, Angelina, that I just interviewed, she went to Ryerson, my university, uh, studied fashion. And then she went on and got a master's in costume design. So it does really, really help if you can study it first, because you will learn a lot. But the one thing that I found, because I went to theater school and um is that you will meet people. That's the best way to get work is to meet people who want to work with you. So when I first started out, I basically would work with my friends. I would just say, hey guys, I'm doing a show. Do you want to come and work with me? And that's how we sort of built our team. And from there, then they would hire me as well if they gone on a show. And that's, in fact, I did my internship at a, a local theater because one of the girls in my class happened to be the head of wardrobe in at the theater. So that's how I ended up getting the show. And now how I got into film was weird because at the time my boyfriend worked in film. So he's like, how do you should work in film? I'm like, I don't know. But then he put me in contact with someone and that's how I ended up getting work in film. So it's kind of, I don't want to say it's a who you know, but in a way it is. But really studying and going to school, I think, would be your best bet. So if you're in, uh, depending where you live in Canada or the United States, there's usually a program either for fashion or for costume design or costuming, I should say. Does that answer yeah. your question? I sure. I think it does. I think mm -hmm. it really would. I great. Did a great job there. All right. What are we looking at here? Oh, this is Hermione. Um, this is her, one of her uh, her ball costumes. Here it is on display. So again, this is an example, I think. It doesn't say, she didn't sign it, but this is just sort of a simple illustration, probably hand rendered by a, uh, uh, a fashion illustrator, costume illustrator. And then this is the final product. So that's her wearing it. And then that's it on the right, on display. And it's absolutely beautiful. And the yeah, structure- I it looks re really nice. I, love the that, color. I, I can see that too. I could see something like this in, in, in the House of the Dragon. You know, a little mm -hmm. bit more, I would think this is maybe look, you know, this kind of looks, I don't know, like 
like some type of lingerie type situation. Maybe a little more built. That seems like back then everything was like like when you looked at Cersei stuff and everything else, it just everything seems so stiff. Like a, a lot of her cos costumes with the open neck. Like it seemed like this looks like it moves better. Like when she walked, you could see it shimming, shimming with a I don't oh, know yeah. what do with shimmy. You know, like it yeah. seems like the Laurel Royal Palace and all that. It was like really, you know, kind of like the Southern Bell type thing. Like it was just so big and kind of stiff, it seems like. So I don't know if they're gonna go that route with the stiff costumes for the but that's that's what it seems like to me, the Game of Thrones style. It's very, very stiff like this. Fabric doesn't move. One, well, there's a few things I really would like to see, kind of my wish list. Maybe I'll do a video on my wish list. Um, I would like to see um, lace, because we didn't see any lace in Game of Thrones. Mirish lace. I would like to see ermine. Everyone who knows me knows I love ermine. And if you guys don't know what ermine is, it's a type, it's a weasel um, that they would have used for royalty. Like, so uh, it would be white with a little black flex in it. You oftentimes see it on, as trim on robes and things like that. I'd love to see ermine. I would love to see lots of jewels. Um, we, we don't really see jewels in mm -hmm. Game of Thrones. We didn't see any jewels in Game of Thrones. So those are some things that I would really, like lots of rings and lots of jewels. And um, yeah, so they made what that kind, decision kind of in the original Game of Thrones. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. I was wondering, like, what kind of jewelry? Was it, uh, you're thinking about like heavier pieces, more Targaryen type or more a uh, kind of like... Um, yes, I, I mean, guess, I mean, well, Michelle like, did... Lace. Michelle did some kind of like bit some slightly contemporary pieces, like especially with Danny. She's you know she would have that really sculptured kind of neck mm -hmm. piece, but with Cersei we didn't really see uh, except for like she had a mm -hmm. few necklaces and stuff. But I didn't see really any gemstones, like uh, especially on the men. Like the, I would have loved to have seen more gemstones as well, like rubies, sapphires, uh, that type of thing. Um, uh, what do you call it? The green one. I can't think yeah, of it. Emerald? To, Emerald. Say, <laughs> Dragon Demand says what I was about to say, too. The earrings and stuff, you know. Yes, I, I didn't earrings. Really now, were they, like, like when did earrings come into fact? It just like, it seemed like they, there was no earrings or anything like that going on there. You, I think when we wear an earrings for a very long time. Now. Yeah, people have had their skin pierced for many, many years. So there would have been something, for sure. Um, and so I would definitely love to see that. Again, like for, for instance, like with the Starks, Michelle made this decision that the Starks would wear no jewelry, not even a wedding band or anything, right? Mm -hmm. And so she, but she did those padded collars at, for the Starks. So I just, you know, that's just a design decision she made. And I totally got what she was going for because she was like, you know, they're looking around what they have access to. But certainly they would have had access to some semi-precious stones and semi-precious mm -hmm. metals. So I would just love to see that, but definitely... I am keeping my fingers crossed that there's ermine. And one of the reasons why ermine was really important, especially for royalty, is it was a sign of status. It mm -hmm. is actually in, the, in many coat of arms, um, which is interesting because a lot of the houses are based on, uh, I think House Florent has it in their coat of arms. The dragon's here. He might know better than me. But it, it, it was used in a lot of coat of arms along with metals and with colors. So I just think that would be a great thing. So you guys can tell me what you think you'd like to see. That would be nice if they had that from, uh, what was it, Dragonstone, the different colors of, um, gosh, I'm liking dragon glass. No, is that it? Yes, yeah, so like, yeah, exactly. I would like that. Yeah, so dragon glass is kind of like... Um, uh, sort of what it was it obsidian right yeah, so obsidian. they could totally have jewelry made out of obsidian and in fact like the museum in my town they have obsidian like you can go there and it even looks just like mm -hmm. dragon glass it's really really interesting wow. so that would make very cool jewelry as well yeah because royalty to me especially you know only royalty you know it's english royalty that we see you know in the united states or whatever but from back in the day from everything it was all about the, the chunk jewels like they mm -hmm. had big thick jewels like big rings like huge rings huge necklaces the crown was mm -hmm. uh, had jewels all over it they had a they carried a scepter it's because it was just, just to hold more jewels you know so. yeah and then george talks a lot about this in his in his books like he does a lot of descriptions about it the rings even like on men like we would think maybe that wouldn't be very masculine but back then that would be a sign of your wealth a sign of your status you would wear your wealth on you uh rhaenyra she or even like she even like what trades her crown right um to get passage because it would have been worth a lot of money having those gemstones in the crown so i think that 
uh, yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to see more of that. And I don't know if they will, but it would be really cool. And it would just sort of, um, I think just heighten it a little bit for mm us. I mean, even to this day, right? People, jewelry is a, people always wear jewelry. The richest people wear the biggest diamonds and everything to show that they have all that money and stuff. That's and, yeah. and jewelry just looks nice. It just said, it just, it's just a finishing touch to the outfit. You know, it's just like the last piece of the outfit. You have a beautiful outfit, then you put some jewels on and boom, it just sets everything right off. Yeah, by the way, look at this picture. It's got Robert Pattinson in it. <laughs> like how young is yep. he here? <laughs> what is that guy looks like a Mountie over there on the left hand side. I Mountie? know, I know. <laughs> I, I'm not, uh, I can't remember the context of this. Maybe he was Russian or something. I'm not super crazy about that. Hopefully kind of looks like a Mountie. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm Canadian, so I know what a Mountie. <laughs> it definitely looks like a Mountie there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I have to admit, I've only seen the hair, the pot. I've seen all Harry Potter movies, but I've only seen them once. So I'm not even like that well versed in it. I tried to get my kids to read the books. They're just like, eh, like they just are not into it at all. They just are not into fantasy. So we've kind of like, it's funny on Friday night, uh, we watched Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, <laughs> which the kids had never seen that before. So that was fun. So yeah, I, I'm not that well versed in Harry Potter. So um, but from what I can tell, her stuff is really, really beautiful. It seems like it. It seems, it seems like she does yeah. great, great work. I've seen this movie, Children of Mordor. Okay, I, so I, this this is the movie I was telling you that it's, mm -hmm. I, the dragon I mentioned that's the same production designer. So I have to say, of all her movies that she's done, this is probably the one that I'm like, this was a, a brilliant movie. And it's sci-fi, but I would even put it in the speculative fiction. It's a future story mm -hmm. telling, uh, a, a, you know, post-apocalyptic kind of story. So, and the interesting thing is when I found out she did the costumes for it is I didn't notice the costumes at all, which to me is an amazing compliment because if you don't notice the costumes oftentimes, that's just a, that means the person's done an amazing mm -hmm. job. Have you seen this movie, Tony? Yes, I did. I rem I don't remember, but I do remember seeing it. Yeah, I have yeah. thought it too. Really nice. Yeah. So that so that was so that I think that is the same. Now this is the one where she started really after Harry Potter. Obviously, she got a lot of attention because she did two of the uh, James Bond movies, mm -hmm. and uh, obviously now Tom Ford. My understanding is he supplied the suits for James Bond himself, but then Jenny or Jenny, sorry, she did the she would have dressed him like she's this is from her instagram she says this is me styling uh daniel craig right, so, so she would have um, Ford brings he gives a whole rack of stuff and then she goes wear this with this with this with this yes i think so um okay. so and that's and st so if anybody doesn't know what a stylist is that's what uh it basically what tony just said you would take racks of clothing and then you would just kind of put it all together and decide how it looks like you know hey let's put this tie with his suit and we're going to put this pocket square in this suit and we're gonna have him wear this watch now i think although i think there was probably a watch sponsor it's probably rolex or something he's wearing like you know everything he's wearing is like the best kind of yeah, thing Tom Ford oh, he should right miles of suit. yeah he's if 007 yeah and then uh this is one of her dresses and it was funny because so i did this video maybe about a month ago called more epic uh film costumes and i came across this outfit that uh that's worn here uh who is it it is severine is the bond girl she's one of the bond girls this is her here on the left um so this is like it's supposed to look like tattoos but it's on in like a sheer net so again this is an example lmr where she probably would have had this embroidered like that uh okay that really delicate yeah. black outline there but I came across it because I was doing a video on, I don't know if anybody's seen Gilda. This is Gilda, which is a movie from the 40s, black and white starring Rita Hayworth. And this dress uh, is really famous. So when I was doing research on it, I found out that she actually based this dress here on the Gilda dress. Oh. And the reason is, is because it had this crazy like understructure under it. So it almost looks like it's been like, like spray painted on her. It's so sculpted you know what i mean so there was a lot of engineering that went into this dress and putting this dress together yeah it's a beautiful dress i mean i can't it's I, pretty I, gorgeous i wouldn't mind having a girlfriend rocking that dress around me that would be great yeah <laughs> i wish you showed it from the side completely from the side i'm curious into where does it cut off like is it by the hips is it completely sheer on the side it's, it's gorgeous 
It is like if you can you see oh, um can you see I, like I the see picture it, yeah, on the yes. right? Yep, yep. The one yeah. over there. It's it's the interesting yeah. actually because it kind of reminds me a bit of Cersei. You know, like Cersei had mm -hmm. those side panels. It's kind of like yep. that. She had those sort of gores. Um, but yeah, super sheer. So it has that sort of hint of sexuality. Oh, well, that's very sexy. I, I, yeah, that, it's I really sexy. I, I that would that wouldn't last two minutes around me. That'd be off. Oh dear. Right? <laughs> you should at least take her out for dinner first, Tony. It would be off. <laughs> <laughs> we can order in. We got Uber Eats nowadays, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. I'm curious to see where the like for her, where the usually there's a zipper or not a zipper, but maybe some little buttons. Like that thing is really well fitted to her body. And how do you check that off? I <laughs> have no idea. Right? I don't even know. I'm trying to well, see where it is. Like I have no it must yeah. slip over her. It might be a stretch net, uh okay. stretchy net. Um, because you're right, LMR, there's no fasteners on this. Yeah. So it's it's like it a bit of engineering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because um, we I, I think we've talked about this or maybe we haven't talked about that. You know, a lot of Sansa's costumes, she was sewn into them. Did you oh, know wow. that? Yeah, they were so um, they, they had to actually so she couldn't go to the bathroom. I think also uh, Danny was also sewn into her outfit. So they would have you wouldn't be able to go to the bathroom for hours and hours. Oh, my gosh. Um, and so, yeah, so a lot of this stuff was just like they wanted it super fitted and tight, but there was no way to do it with fasteners. So they just stitched them right in. Oh my and that goodness. happens sometimes. That's the uh, one of the magics of uh, wardrobe. That so, reminds me of, uh, you said they were stitched in and they couldn't use the, the bathroom. There was somewhere they, they, there was, I'm not sure if it's a channel or something, or maybe just a quick video of how women, you know, mm -hmm wore dresses back then and they showed how long it takes to put that stuff on and then what do you do when you have to go use the restroom and they showed different ways they did that and wow that that was uh determination like entire day you were in that thing entire day and you had to improvise so that was crazy back then yeah well they would i mean they would have had crotchless underwear too. Yes, like they wouldn't that, have had any yeah. so tony yeah. <laughs> or drawers they would have been called drawers well, i like would... underwear but i don't like i don't like the, the term drawers it just doesn't yeah. sound sexy it doesn't sound sexy <laughs> drawers you know? like men wear drawers right? they did that and wasn't wore drawers too. The, those were like not just like the you said crotchless underwear it wasn't just like you know the, the the thing that people may think now it was literally like white kind of like um cotton or linen or whatever yep. fabric puffy looking up to your just above the knee sometimes from what i saw and yep. it had strings and there was just you know not it was no just too, it was just basically covered your legs and then yep. you would and then it would be on yes. a waistband and then I mean, the rest would yeah. just be open mm -hmm. but you would, you'd be wearing like petticoats and stuff so yeah. you would it yeah. would keep you warm but yeah you could just like actually they do a really good job yeah. in uh someone mentioned outlander earlier um they do a really there's a really great scene in outlander and she's like you know she's from the future mm -hmm. she's you know uh from 1950 but she's gone gone back to 1750 sorry if i've spoiled this for anybody and there's this one really great scene where she has to go to the bathroom because they've been drinking beer and they just go she just lifts up her skirts and kind of pees in a bucket <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. and then they take the urine from the bucket and they use that to um to soften the wool that they're uh, beating wow. on a table which is true they used to do that wow yeah, so I thought that was really, really funny. Interesting. Well, that's oh, not Kiki exactly. says outlanders are life. I, I like downy nowadays. I, I, I go with that. That's, that's <laughs> of my fabrics are more than, than, than urine. I'm glad they came up with something better than that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tony, I thought you might like to see this because this is an example of some sort of more fantastical stuff that she did for um, one of the, it was either Skyfall so there's Skyfall, um, mm -hmm. and uh, when they do the uh, Mardi Gras, or no, it's not, sorry, it's the Day of the Dead uh, scene, they were down in Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, these are some of the dresses that they worked on in, in the wardrobe here. And I was laughing because <laughs> this wardrobe yeah. is so sad looking. This would have been an on-location place. Maybe they got a warehouse, that they a makeshift warehouse that they turned into a wardrobe, and you can see. But uh, here they are, uh, some oh of the... Goodness staff working on the costumes but these are pretty crazy now this dress makes me kind of hungry it reminds me of whipped cream but the other like one, whipped cream. yes the other one uh triggers me the the little spiky things they're very triggering but this i'm, I'm getting hungry looking at it 
<laughs> yeah. They look like, I don't know, like feathers or something like that. Yeah, they, they do. Sounds, yeah. They, I think they're actually, um, they, I think they're plastic. Men oh. should probably look like feathers. Just to kind of um, make it puffier looking. Make it but... puffier looking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to show you guys. I don't know if you can see this. Oh, actually, I probably can zoom in. This is something I learned I can do here. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the very back wall here, you see how there's mm -hmm. all these giant bulletin boards. Yeah. Okay. Those are what I would call, uh, those are like mood boards. So that would have all of their, you know, if Jenny's done any research and she wants the staff to see it, she's put it up all on the wall here. It might also con contain pictures that they've taken of the cast during fittings as well. And uh, just kind of any reference pictures that she might need to rely on. So oftentimes they will do that. So a lot of the costume designers that I've interviewed or just, or researched, they'll do that. They'll just, they'll, go through, a, even Michelle Clapton's done that as well. Um, they'll go through a bunch of different uh, source materials, maybe fashion designers, maybe historical periods, and put it up all into a, an album or on a bulletin board. Mm -hmm. These ladies in the chat, urine is great. Hot urine to, <laughs> to set die as I, I, I mean, I didn't know urine was so, was so, uh, so you special that they could use it for so much things, you know? You may have to stop bottling that stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's funny because like yours, uh, there's this really fun show that I watch. If you're into history at all, it's called The 100 House and it takes place. Um, it's actually these British, I think they're history professors and they go and live in this house and they pretend like it's 100 years ago for a hmm. year. Like they did this for a year. For and a they were year. showing, yeah, for a whole year. And, you know, oh, they yeah. farm and they make food and they do all this stuff. And then, Anyway, but it was really funny because they were showing all the uses of urine. Like she'd be like, you know, after we have her, they have like a little pot. They show this in Game of Thrones, actually. You keep it under your bed and you pull mm -hmm. it out and you pee in it. And it actually, eventually they can turn it into ammonia and you can use ammonia to clean and do all kinds of different things. So yeah, they wouldn't have wasted anything. Now they wow. might've wasted their poop. I don't know what they did with that. I hope so. Manure? <laughs> I'm sure I'm I don't all, know they probably put it inside there, probably used it for, for vegetable growing. They, just they might have composted it, it for sure. Yeah, put in some fertilizer or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think, or maybe it's called 1900 House. Is that what it's called? Thank you, Lady mm -hmm. Leaf. Anyway, so an interesting show. And then they've gone on to do all these series, like they did one called Victorian Pharmacy. And anyway, so I occasionally watch them because it's just sort of interesting to see some of the things that they that they did. Wow. Yeah, it's things that I'm never going to do. That's why I like <laughs> yes. technology. Me you neither. Know, I'm, I'm, I'm about that technology. All right, what is this? This looks like the uh, thing from uh, from Cobra Kai. It looks like the, the, the <laughs> outfit that Johnny was wearing back in the Karate Kid. Is that what that is? So this is uh, Daniel Craig, 007, and he's at he's at um, uh, Day of the Dead ceremony. So they, they did this, uh, you know, suit, and then they painted it to look like a skeleton. Apparently they went through several of these. This is it on. Um, do you, did you see this movie? I gosh, mm -hmm. I saw this movie years ago, yeah. so I can't exactly remember. Yeah, they but, did have a lot of those hanging uh, in the background. Where in that last picture you said uh, you showed. Um, absolutely. So I'm thinking them. it might have been um, that they did a multiples. Either they needed them for stunts, or Fun, they just yeah. were doing different tests. Sometimes, a lot of the times, even Michelle Clapton, you know, she's talked about this a lot. Is that they'll test different things out, mm -hmm. and some things make it to camera, some things don't. But also, they would have probably have need multiples to. Actually, even in this picture here of Jenny, I have her. There's a rack of them. It says day one Mexico suit. So that's what they called it, the Mexico suit. All right. All right. So what else do I have to show you guys <clears throat> next? Oh, uh, I haven't seen this movie, but I actually am going to check it out. I don't know if anyone in the chat has seen this. Victor Frankenstein is another one she did. All right. I'm and not sure if I saw that one. Yeah. So it's with... Um, uh, what do I have it here? Oh, yeah. yes, I have. That that was, uh, yeah. It didn't get a very good reviews. Mm -hmm. So that one is with um, uh, Daniel, what is it? Daniel Radcliffe. Uh, X-Men wasn't, is that the same guy? No? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right, sorry, I didn't write it down. James McAvoy? James McAvoy? So he is plays James Frankenstein James? and Daniel Radcliffe mm -hmm. plays Igor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which I thought was hilarious, but anyway, so we're dealing with like a Victorian, yeah, you know, style era, historical. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, no, she, this lady, I think she's got talent. There's no denying the talent mm-hmm. that she has to pull this off. And I'm very pleased that they, they, they chose her and she agreed to do it. And that, now, now, Heidi, I'm, this is probably, how much would a woman like that get paid? How much money is she pocketing to do all this work? I mean, what, 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 what's the take home for her? If you know, like, like a ballpark for someone as successful as her. What is she uh, I think it's a lot. <laughs> It's, I'm sure it's a lot, but I mean, she ain't getting paid by the hour here, right? Uh, they might. She might get paid by the episode. That's how they do it with the actors. Okay. Um. So it. Yeah. It. I'd say it's a lot. It's certainly not as much as the cast. Um. But it. Yeah. I would say it's a lot. I'd say in a couple of million. A couple of million for per episode. Uh. No. Probably for the season. For the whole season, so she's probably yeah, like couple, at least a couple of million. I would think a million for the season. But yeah. the hours she's putting in is ridiculous, right? Like she's putting in a ridiculous amount of time. Yeah. It's true. And this is why I was, I was saying it was interesting because like the costume designer for Bridgerton, which is looks like it might go on for eight seasons, they were saying, she's 71. And I'm thinking, oh my God, like how long would you be able to do this for? And then sort of said the same thing. So House of the Dragon, I don't know how many seasons they've ordered. Maybe they're only ordering one season to start. Yes, it's one season straight. When you know came straight to order, this is the first season. So, so potentially it could go on if it does well. It could go on for multiple seasons. So I have a feeling, you know, she wouldn't be able to do, you know, if it went on multiple seasons, she wouldn't be able to do it till her eighties. I just don't think it would happen. But because uh, because as you say, Tony, the amount of stamina. Now, having said that, your president right now, I don't. How old is that guy? <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know, but I don't know really making it that many seasons. I mean, <laughs> my, pri- my prime minister is in his 40s. Like, yeah, it may be his first and last season for him. In all I don't know if we make it two seasons at all. So. <laughs> uh, no, Sarah. No, Sarah. The, no, I didn't. I, I meant um, the costume designer for the for Bridgerton is 71 and then um, Jenny is 72. So I'm just saying they're the same age. So like you know, depending on how many seasons they, they go. But, you know, it's common also that a costume designer for a show will move on and, and then, you know, someone else will take over. So that's possible. She might just do the first season to establish it and then maybe it will be taken over. Or if she finds that it works well with her lifestyle, then maybe she'll keep on. Or maybe she's looking for that Emmy. She doesn't have an Emmy yet. Maybe she wants she's an looking, Emmy. Maybe she Absolutely. wants to get that Emmy. And she's like, I'm going for the Emmy now. I mean, and wouldn't this be a perfect way? Hopefully, if this will work out, the show will work out for everybody's sake. Um, yeah. And for her, obviously, as well. She worked on so many different things. And uh, obviously, Game of Thrones has been established. So just to at least meet our expectations and exceed them, possibly. Yeah, I think we will definitely exceed expectations. Uh, and I think that it may be easier for her to do some of these outfits because when you deal with Game of Thrones, like like you're doing the soldiers, they all got the same outfit, right? You just got to basically change the sigil. And you know the color of the sigil already, so you know the color, color you're working with. You know, so it, it really is not hard. You look at the Starks, they all basically wore the same thing. It wasn't like you had... 20 different outfits from that slight change here slight change there but it was basically the same outfit for them so it might be easier for her to do this stuff you know i would just think the royal people the targaryens and all that that would be the, the biggest issue but everyone else i think they're gonna wear this about the same thing i think it, you know i don't think it's gonna be a problem for her to get these outfits out there yeah that actually uh, brings about uh, an, an interesting uh question is will because hbo owns all of the costumes from the original Game of Thrones. Will she be able to just use some of those? Will she be able to repurpose some of those things? Because if she is, that will cut back on her work. But at the same time, she might mm-hmm. be like, well, I don't want the armor that we used in, that's designed by Michelle Clapton to be the same armor that I designed for the Targaryens or for the uh, Lannisters. Or, or actually the Lannisters aren't mm-hmm. in it, right? So. And uh, you're, maybe- you're, you're, you're not, you know, I, I, I don't know. I think, no, no, they're, they're not dominant. They're there. Mm-hmm. The Lannisters are there. They are Lannisters back at that time period. They're there. So, but then, you know, there's not too many dominant Lannisters in the story uh, that they show, but they're, they're, they're there. Uh, Valerian, yeah. who, who we're excited for. House Valerian, the Black House. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that'll, that'll be a new house she'll be able to design. Um, mm-hmm. Now and also, we we saw very little of Targaryen armor uh, under you know under uh, Ares. Uh, mm-hmm. 
So we only, yeah, we only saw a little bit of his armor and flashbacks. So there is, I, you know, she could probably just redo that. Like she could just do her own thing for that. I don't think she and, has to and, use. And they probably have. they're going to be, you know, they're going to be riding dragons. So she's going to have to have armor for a lot of ladies because they're dragon riding ladies. So she's probably going to put them in armor. So you have the armor for the ladies on dragon back. You'll have to, I mean, a saddle would most likely be the props department and stuff. I, I think yeah. they're going to do a dragon saddle. They should do a dragon saddle. Yeah. If they do not do a dragon saddle, like, like <laughs> Game of Thrones messed it up. Like, I don't know how they didn't put a damn dragon saddle on there. They don't do a dragon yeah. saddle. There's a problem. They got to have a dragon saddle on there, you know? So I, I think she's got, she's got, I think she's going to do a, an ec excellent job. And then you, you get to switch up the sigil because in one part, if they change the sigil to a gold dragon will be there. So, you know, it, I think she's going to do a really good job. On I, you know, I, I think it's, I, I, I'm excited to have this hire. I think, I think they've hit it out the ballpark with a lot of these people that they put in position. They, they, they're putting their best foot forward. Uh, what the what the now it really comes down to the the showrunners uh, and the writing of the show is 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 is, is, it, is it top notch enough to to get it done because everything else it seems to be in place they're gonna have the budget they're gonna have they have they have the good costume people they have the good person doing the music they're bringing him back I mean so I think and the actors seem like they could hold it down there's a couple actors I've never heard of before but you know I'm trusting them in that so. I, I think they're set up for success. It's really up to the writers to, to put it out there and to film it right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, T Tony, I totally agree with what you're saying. To add to my list, my wish list of Mira Slice and uh, Ehrman, uh, I was really mad <laughs> that they didn't have Danny wearing armor. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought that was a huge uh, mistake and it didn't make any sense to me uh, thematically or, you know, visually or just, you know, practically. Um, also, because I always thought, like, okay, how cold is it up there, too? That was the other thing I always thought. Yeah, she had no earmuffs. She had nothing. She had no on earmuffs, her. nothing. Yeah. And she's, she's used you know, to warm weather, too. So it's yeah. not like she was used well, to that kind of weather. Have, yeah, I mean, I'm sure they had, listen, people's ears been cold for a long time. So I'm sure they have something for the ears. You know, uh, she had no earmuffs up there. And she's flying. So you're in the air, right, where it's colder, the higher up you go, <laughs> in the north. With no goddamn earmuffs on, you know, I, you know these skinny ass gloves, these these leather gloves yeah. with no insulation inside. So uh, hanging on to some dragon scales, it's yeah, so unrealistic. It's, it's impossible. The only way to excuse them, I guess, uh, but again, I'm just excusing them because. Um, but she has advisors, right? Those that she did not burn or had advisors. Um, back then, I'm thinking that day where um, they mastered everything that, you know, they had dragons. Dra they knew what dragons needed. They knew what um, dragons maybe uh, should have for them to be safer to fly on. For Danny, those were the first dragons in a long time. But again, uh, shouldn't there be, again, some kind of, uh, you know, knowledge passed down to it was not that long, right? I mean, yeah, there were dragons. I, I, it was a little while ago, but I'm just yeah. saying, I'm saying, listen, if, yeah. you, if you if you ride a horse and you get a horse, yeah. horse has been going. You sit on our horse's ass one time, you're gonna say, I need a seat. Yeah. I mean, it, that's just everyone needs a seat. If you sit yeah. on the ground, you get a cushion, right? And eventually, mm -hmm. sitting on the ground, someone invents a cushion and puts it, makes it softer, right? You lay on the bed, you make a pillow. You got to do something because it's hard. Anytime there's some hard service, someone's going to try to soften it up somehow. So there's no way them dragon ass scales is 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 no. feeling good on you. Uh, so yeah. They, they well, you're in the air, right? You're flying on uh, on a horse. You will, you know, you will fall and you may die. Yeah. Uh, bro break I, uh, yeah. Well, the yeah. thing with the lack of headpieces, that was unfortunately, that was the director of photography who wouldn't let them wear anything on their head. Mm. So, because of shadows, and but like you say, Tony, she could have worn some type of a medieval air muff. Yes, <laughs> uh, some kind of ear muff. You need an ear muff. You know? What are we uh, looking at here? What is this? Oh, I thought I'd show you this. This is kind of fun. So, this is from the movie "The Kid Who Would Be Ki The Kid Who Would Be King." Okay. So it's sort of a uh, a children's movie. Actually, I think I'm going to watch it with my kids because it's sort of a, a modern retelling of um, the Knights of the Round Table. And it's a you know the the protagonist and is a child. So this is Morgana. Uh, this is her costume, and I thought it was really cool. And I found these pictures on Jenny's uh, Instagram of uh, Rebecca Ferguson wearing it. So there's an example of something that she did, sort of like a little bit fantasy.
And then here are the kids dressed up in their armors. I mean, it's very simple. They're just wearing like helmets and gorgets and very Don, uh, John Snow. Yeah, uh, Paul Johns. Type of armor like this, you know? Yeah. yeah. yeah I, tell you, I think that was one of the problems with The Witcher, that the, the costumes in The Witcher didn't work for me, especially like uh, some some of the armor set. It's Nif Nifgard armor, especially. Yeah. It was, the, he got a lot of backlash about that. Yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> it, looked, it looked like trash cans, like trash bags. I, yeah. I don't know what he was thinking. That was a nicer that. way of putting it than some people put it. I'm trying to be nice. To the guy. You know, I don't know who did it, but I just know he, that that looked terrible. I that interviewed was, him. He was, he's a very nice person. Oh, I'm sorry. If he yeah. Did. No, he's I'm a very, saying. he's a very, no, 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 don't, he, no, it's fine. Like, I'm sure he, he knows. I, it was, it's just one of those things, like when you go to do something and sometimes how it, the outcome doesn't necessarily, oh, he said they didn't have a lot of time. I think that's what it was. He was rushed. Yeah. Then so. I think you go with this, the basic, simple stuff that everyone knows. You don't try to go out the box. I think sometimes people overthink things and try to be too cute, you know? And that's yeah. what it seemed like to me, like he was trying to be too out of the box, too different. Sometimes it's better just to, to do what people know if you don't have time, you know, to do things like that. For sure. Yeah, and this is, this is one of the things. Yes. No, I, I was just to your point, Tony. This is the thing sometimes people don't understand is, you know, a lot of times the designers are like given these ridiculous timelines and they're they're forced to, you know, they have to get something out. And it's almost like a it's like a. Uh, uh, an assembly line they just have to get it out and done so that they can get done in time and so they don't have time to maybe like play around with some uh, different concepts and just troubleshoot and do like now with henry cavill apparently though they did they spent a lot of time on him i guess but for some reason the nilf guard were an afterthought and they shouldn't have been an afterthought no 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 is very important <laughs> yeah so jenny's Jenny's big movie coming out. This is her big movie. Is is Black Widow, and I think okay. because of COVID, uh, it was supposed to get a theatrical release. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure what, what's happening with it, but they, um, they still think that they 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 still they wait. They pushed it back so long. They, they're saying that they're still going to do a theatrical release, but I think that what's going to happen to them is that they're going to release it on Disney Plus and theaters at the same time, and probably make you pay like four, thirty bucks for it. Uh, just to rent it, not to keep sure. it, and then after that, when a theater thing goes out, then they'll go straight to Disney. Well, I think that's how, I think they have to now, especially with the fact that HBO Max is releasing all their stuff on uh, on on uh, on all their movie WB movies on HBO Max for free, basically. If you just own the service, I think they're going to be forced to do it uh, to get it out because it's it's, it's taking way too long. Should have been out last year. It's yeah. So uh, one of the things I was going to mention is. Uh, uh, for for instance, any of the Marvel movies, the concepts are normally done by this guy named Ryan Minerding. He's on uh, Instagram. I follow him. He does. He's basically done like this guy is so talented. He has done pretty much every Marvel movie, the concepts. So Jenny probably would have had to work with him on doing this movie because uh, Marvel are very, very uh, controlling regarding how everything has to be approved by them. Um, they're their own studio. They're massive, obviously, and they have the stakes are high for them. So she would have not probably been able to make uh, as many decisions on something like this. Mm -hmm. So like, for instance, Ruth Carter, who did Black Panther, uh, Ryan did the initial design, but one of the things that Ruth really wanted is the triangle motif in it because it was very... Uh, it has a lot of symbolism in Africa. So she wanted to have that element added. So they did incorporate some of her ideas, but Ryan is really the person who um, did it. And then her team would have been the ones who would have built it. And again, they would have gone through probably multiple uh, prototypes, but also she was inheriting the inheriting, I can't even say that word, inheriting. You got it. <laughs> hit, hit the original uh, design that came from the prequel uh, before that. So um, again, I'm not, I've seen all the Marvel movies, but honestly, sometimes I'll say, sorry, who, who is this? And when did this happen? And I get confused. I'm not a comic book person. So I have watched all the Marvel movies and I will definitely watch this. And I am watching WandaVision, but half the time, I don't know what's going on. So that's, <laughs> that's my take on it. Everyone. Yeah, but she did. I, I loved, I, you know, I, I love, I thought the black, 
little stuff that I've seen from the trailers, our outfits look, look very good. Yeah, right? they look really, really good. Um, no, I'm looking forward to this for sure. Well, a lot of this stuff, you know, is obviously is taken. From, they, they have comic books. They look at the comic books for references and they try to make it, you know, they can't be as silly as they are in the comic books. They try to make it, you know, more modern and stuff. So they have something to draw from when they, when they pull it, the, when they do like comic book movies. I think that, uh, you know, it's funny because in the last episode of WandaVision, I don't want to give anything away. They sort of, you know, obviously they borrowed from it because it was supposed to be Halloween. But in mm. this, you know, in in all of the Marvel movies, they always try to ground it. They always try to make it realistic. Like, you know, this is something realistic that someone's actually wearing and how they get in and out of it. And, you know, with Tony Stark, they always show him how he's actually getting in and out of the outfit. So, you mm. know, this has like a zip front. You could, you know, it's a jumpsuit. You can climb in and out of it. There's a harness with snaps or fasteners or what have you. So unlike that mysterious uh, James Bond dress, which um, both right, Lamar exactly. and I don't know how she got in. At least the jumpsuits, obviously, you would want them to be quick in and out uh, off because it's for action. You need to put it on maybe and take it off if need be for that yes. one. But um, so I'm sure they, um, she would, she's great at um, incorporating that. Um, it being actually functional when it actually yeah. needs to be functional, not I like feel, the dress. I feel, I feel bad for Scarlett Johansson because she deserved to have a billion dollar movie on her resume. And yeah. she would have had a billion dollar movie on her resume if this thing didn't hit and she's not going to get one now. And I know, uh, I know. Um, Mohammed, that's actually uh, Black Widow. It's not Wonder Woman, which um, I, sorry, I hated. <laughs> I hated that Wonder that was, Woman. That was a terrible movie. movie. Terrible movie. Oh, it was so bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, this looks like it's going to be really good. I'm really excited about it. And you know what, to be honest with you, I mean, uh, Marvel, you know, they hit it out of the ballpark more than they don't hit it all out of the ballpark. So yeah. they're, you know, they're entitled to uh, have a few failures. Yeah, they're a tight run ship. And I think when yeah. you, have, you have one guy who runs the ship. And when, when you have one guy who's heading everything and everyone has to answer to him, it makes it more cohesion. You know, everyone knows. And, and these outfits go from movie to movie to movie to movie, you know. So it's got to have one guy that runs it. And we have Kevin Feige running it. That, that, that's why it, it all works. Absolutely. Yeah. I, okay. Before we finish up or wrap up with this, this is the last of my pictures. I, I had to post this. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, you guys know this movie? movie? Okay, so a couple of weeks ago, Jack and I, my husband and I were going through, we have to, there's a movie we wanted to watch and it's called um, Patient Zero. It came up and, <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing already. Uh, it stars um, Matt Smith, Natalie Dormer and John Bradley, who, you know, are both from Game of Thrones. And of course, Matt, Dame, uh, Matt Smith is going to be in House of the Dragon. Now, I, that's not why I, wanted, why I wanted to watch it. Like, Stanley Tucci's in it as well. But it's actually a zombie movie. So I'm like, oh, this looks so good. So without looking it up ahead of time, we decided to watch it. And this is an example of when you can have some incredible actors that come together to do a movie. But if the director and the writer and the producer are, you know, suck, this is what can happen. Like, it's like when a a, a bad movie happens to good people. It is so terrible. <laughs> so I thought I mentioned it to you. It's got like a 14% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh my God. Yeah. So, uh, and the funny thing is, and I'm not sure, oh, it would be interesting to see what Matt Smith does in House of the Dragon, but he puts on an American accent for some reason and he's so bad at it. You know, and of course, yeah. I'm not American, I'm Canadian, but I mean, I can tell when an American accent is just brutal. <laughs> um, and these two are supposed to be a love interest and they have like no chemistry. It's just oh, so no. weird. The whole thing is just bizarre. Yeah, that, that, that is I not what's going to gonna happen. Right. Like, I hope they get that part right. Are they going to have all the Targaryens with British accents? Whatever they do, I hope they all are consistent with the same accent, you know. I think they should be. They're all family. They're from the same area. They should be consistent. So whatever accent they do do, I hope that they it's everyone has the same accent. Like you don't have one guy sound like a Scottish person, one guy sound British, another guy sound French, and they're all from the same family. You got it's got to be yeah. the same thing right across the board. Um, now the one actress that they've hired, uh, who I love, she's an ex Machina. She's I think she's American. The, you know uh, the girl from Ex Machina? The, the, the Asian chick, right? The Asian girl. Yeah. She's also yeah. in a very, very good show called, um, uh, De is it Devs? Devs. Yeah. It, uh, is wow. sort of a science fiction show called Devs. Well, she's from overseas, so she could have a different accent. 
Is she? Not, I think I, she's I, American, yeah. though, isn't she? Yeah, she and her character is not from Westeros. So. Oh, that's it, right. Yes. So she's sort of she's from Lees. Yeah, yeah. So she she could have, she could have something different if she, if she. I'm just saying the royal family should all sound the same, but right? they should yeah. have all the same. Absolutely. Accent because and, they're all around each other. And I believe that so far everyone is British, are they not? In I the think royal so, family? Right? I think I think I think it is. I think everyone is British. I think so. Mm -hmm. All the characters. So I actually I have seen pretty much every actor in it except for the actor who plays. Like I've seen their work except for the actor who plays Coralie's. I haven't seen him in anything. Yeah, I think he's he's new. So like if you look at his at his uh his IMDB and you look him up, you know, he's new. And I say you know, he, he look 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 at him on Twitter, you know, he actually, you know, he responded we to put a tweet up and she he responded right back to you, Costume Co, right? He he responded to you. He said something back to you on Twitter. He responded to me? Yeah, you didn't see it. No. Yeah, you look at it. You go back and look at the thread. Oh my god, that was him? Yeah, that's it. That's I was going on about the racism? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <gasps> Holy cow, I didn't realize that, that that was one of your viewers. No, no, that's it. That's it. I think he oh, follows I me. So I think he follows me now, too. And, that's really but, uh, cool. Yeah, and listen, he only has like 600 followers right now. I'm going to follow him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, watch, I have watch, to tell you also, I, I shared Benjamin Ip. I shared one of his pictures, and he thanked me. Nice. He's a concept artist, yeah. You see, some people are nice people, man, and some yeah. people, you know, look, this guy, he's got 600 followers now watching the, when, the, when the show comes out. That goes to six million overnight. <laughs> uh, Jenna says she's not too crazy about Mr. Lovegood as Otto. Who's playing Otto again? Mr. Love, who's Mr. Lovegood? I don't know. I got Otto, no, Otto oh, Hightower? That guy, the, 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 the guy from Harry Potter. Is playing oh. Otto Hightower, and so I I think if you're if you're typecasting him as that character, you probably won't be happy about it. But it won't be that character he's playing, you know. So I th don't think you can see him as that. You got to see him as this. I mean, I, you just got to see him as as his look, and he's not going to be around too long anyway. But you know, uh, you know, I, I think you can't you get you can't typecast him. You got to give him a shot. I think he's a good actor, so I think he can pull it off. I'm actually can... now that the now that the cast is starting to fill in, I'm starting to get more excited about it because I can kind of start to imagine it. Mm -hmm. yeah, is that I, you, LMR? I... I'm sorry. Now that the cast is sort of filling yes. in, are you feeling kind of starting to feel excited oh, about uh, it? I thought I thought you were just mentioning that you are, and I was just I nodding. Am? Yes, definitely, I am. Um, <laughs> and when you said the costumes, and uh, wasn't it also um, said that um, the same music or not music score will be the same? Yes. Um, so that's kind of gonna carry yeah, the stuff for me. forward. Yeah, and then the costumes and music, and obviously the colors, which are in costumes. Um, that's gonna really put it all together for me. Hopefully, the acting will be great too. Just like you Hopefully, said, well, yeah. like you said, like I said a little bit ago, you, you have great actors there, but it didn't work because the uh, directors and the, the the script wasn't good. So really, come like I said, they're set up for success. It really comes down to the writing right now and what they put out there. Uh, I think that they could pull it off. George R. R. Martin is involved in everything I've seen him write for Game of Thrones. Every episode he wrote was a really good episode. So as long as he's got some involvement in it and he, you know, he's proof checking it and everything else, I think it, I think it could go really well. I think, I think they'll do a good job. At this. Yeah. And I actually, I don't know anybody else who's watched it, but I loved Colony. <laughs> I just thought it was so good. And I was like, when's the next episode? When's the next season coming out? So I don't know if anyone's watched Colony, but that's Ryan Condal's other show that he did. I have it was so it. good. My only thing I didn't like was Lori from The Walking Dead was in it. And I don't know what it is about her, but I can't stand her. <laughs> You just can't. Uh, is, hopefully, you know, um, for people who are or, uh, actors who are going to be in this one, they will kind of blend in with what they're supposed to do. We will not see them. Like, again, apologies for my dog. Like, I can hear him walking. Oh, he's oh no. LMR, you've cut your hair, it looks like. He did cut my hair. I, was thank you. I got bored. It's a pandemic haircut, self haircut. Yes. <laughs> it looks very beautiful. Thank you. It looks great. It looks beautiful. It's always, yeah, it always looks know. beautiful. Thank you. Oh my, my gosh, I'm blushing, blushing under all this. I don't blush. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting cheered up for some reason. I don't know why my eyes are watering. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, not, I'm not going to keep y'all ladies and everyone in the chat on Valentine's Day all day. I'm sure you have significant, you know, unlike me, who's alone, I was going to order Aww. a pizza. 
I'm going to order a pizza and go upstairs and eat some chicken wings and pizza for my Valentine's Day times day. But I'm sure that you people have people who love you. And I do not want to keep you from your loved ones. So I'd like to thank everyone for coming. Heidi, let me thank you for, for being here and doing this again. And, you know, and if something else happens with the concert, or even if it doesn't have to happen, we'll definitely have you back on again. I, I will come back anytime you ask. Well, thank you. Please let the people know where they can find it. I know she's from Costume Co. YouTube channel. If anyone, an uh, ad, ad, administrator in there can please put her a link in the chat so people can find her because she does a lot of this breakdowns, costume stuff, and she has a lot of stuff about to uh, jump off. So, um, and, she, and she, she does a great job and interviews and everything. And her sound quality is amazing. <laughs> oh, thanks. Is this, I don't even know the name of the mic, Tony. This is my mic. I don't even know what it's, Jack picked it up for. It's Audio Technica. Well, so, it's a, great. Yeah, it's when a doing... reasonably priced mic. I I think I got it from Amazon. I don't. I'm not even sure. I don't know any of this stuff. <laughs> Tony just told me my sound is good. Okay. Um, yeah. But oh, so I'm just going to tell you guys. So uh, I have a YouTube channel, as Tony mentioned, and I'm also on Twitter. And I just did a video on The Shining, which was so fun, by the way. And I'm doing a follow up, but it was so, I got, uh, Tony, you probably have had this happen where it got really, really long. And I'm like, I have to break this into two. So I just put the first one out. The next one's coming out. And next week, next Saturday, I'm going to do a live stream about the costumes on WandaVision. So nice. So uh, um, Justin is going to join me and we're going to do that. So hopefully some of you guys will come and pop in. So we're we going to look will. at we're going to look at like how the costumes compare to some of the classic television shows of the 50s and 60s and 70s and that's, you know, my jam, right? Exactly. Yeah. We'll definitely pop in without a doubt and support that as soon as you get the link up, we'll share that link and get Thanks get so much Tony. Over there as And it was also possible. really lovely spending part of Valentine's Day with you too. You're well, so I always you. love being with you guys. And thank you. And thank it was you. It's a lot for, of fun. It is a great time. LMR, as yes. always, it's a beautiful time hanging out with you as always. Uh, you I, you could find her on my channel, but she does pop yes. up on other people's channels and her own mm -hmm. channel. She has a couple of other shows that she does. If you have anything coming up, please let the people know. I actually don't have anything coming up. I um, am going to be enjoying chatting with everybody in the comments and in the chat, live chat. So I'll see everybody there. And obviously when I, our next stream here with Tony uh, will be. So that's. And we do. Saying. We're going to be have a podcast prepared. Mm -hmm. And we're going to shoot. It's about uh, I, we talked about the Lane and Don mm -hmm. podcast. We have switched to a more of a crew crime, yeah. true crime theme. Mm -hmm. And our first one we're going to do. We're going to talk about the preppy murderer Robert Chambers. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do that that story first. That'll be the first one when we get done. So uh, look forward to doing that and look look for that soon enough. Y'all know who I am. I am the Don Tony Teflon. Let me get this outro uh, set up before I even say anything. Thank you all in the chat for coming here. And being my Valentine for Valentine's Day, I I truly appreciate it. If you like the way I do this, please thumbs up. Let's please spread this across the realm. And please subscribe. And until next time, you know who it is. Peace and stay sexy.